to Network 1 class, Introduction to Network, Module 2, entitled Ethernet Concepts. I'm Dennis Takadena, your instructor in this video. So let's start. So our, disc, our module entitled Ethernet Concepts. So we will be discussing Chapter 4, the physical layer. So our module objective is describe the purpose and function of the physical layer in the network. So describe a characteristics of the physical layer. Next is identify the basic characteristics of copper cabling. Another is explain how UTP cable is used in Ethernet networks. Describe fiber optic cabling and its main object advantages over other media connect device using wire and wireless media so what is the purpose of the physical layer so before a any network communication can occur a physical connection to a network must be established so what are the physical connections we will be talking about wiring, cabling, either it used by air transmission re using radio uh, frequency. So those are interconnected with your device of how your device connect to a network. Generally, we will use a network interface card on your computer or probably if you're using your smartphone and laptop there is a built-in network interface card or wireless inter network interface card on your device so a physical layer as we discussed previously on my first video uh, the data encapsulation from your computer it will transmit those uh, PDU or the protocol data unit on every segment or chunk of messages until it will be come to your network interface card with a series of one or zeros because the chunk of message are divided example this data is from your application then the tcp will be on your transport on your ip this will be your internet under tcp ip model on your ethernet this will be your network access or the equivalent of uh, data link and physical so this one will transmit from your data to a bits so the signal from example this client is requesting a uh, web page on the web server so probably it's the, it will be an HTML or a PHP uh, server where the client will request a web page in this server this server will respond to this web client but the transmission over this medium could be a wired or wireless. In this case, it's a wired. Probably if this, uh, this is a client server or a peer-to-peer -peer network, you will be using a crossover here, crossover cable, okay? So the next device in the path to the destination receives the bits and re-encapsulates the frame. Remember, we have discussed previously the protocol data unit of encapsulation and the encapsulation process. So the web client from encapsulation process, so from if you are using TCP IP model from 4321, then the server will receive it from one, two, three, four for encapsulation and the encapsulation of the request. Physical layer characteristics. Oh. Who are in charge? 
So the physical layer standards are implemented in hardware and are governed by many organizations, including the ISO, the EIA, TIA, ITU, the T, the ANSI, and IEEE. So those acronyms was already discussed on the previous video. Physical components. The physical layer standards address three function areas. What are those? Physical components, encoding, and signaling. So the physical components are hardware device, media, and other connectors that transmit the signals that represents the bits. So hardware components like network interface card, interface and connectors, cable materials, and cable design are all is specified in the standard associated with the physical layer. So remember, during your IT Essential course, you created or uh, crimp your straight through and crossover wire. Encoding. So encoding converts the stream of bits into a format recognized by the next device in the network. So remember, if you, the computer is uh, transmitting data to the recipient, so the medium or the media that that being used, either this is fiber optic, it will be transmitting light of series of one or zero, or if these are wired, it transmit through electrical pulse. If you are using radio frequency, or you are using the uh, wireless, this encoding provides predictable pattern that can be recognized by the next device. So they should uh, the next device should agree. Examples of encoding method includes Manchester. So as shown here, so there is an electrical pulse of one of one or uh, one or zero series, there will be a uh, time. So what is the last time of the pulse since it is on the uh, zero and the ne next pulse will be on one. So that is the how the signal through time frame, this one, it will be uh, translated by the uh, recipient computer. So signaling, signaling method is how the bit values one and zeros are represent on the physical medium. So the series of one or zeros, or either this will be your electrical pulse, light pulse, or a radio frequency. So there is an example here of how the electrical pulse in terms of voltage are, are uh, recognized or converted into a series of one or zero. So they are basing on the uh, electrical pulse. Example of these are digital. This is the amplitude module, frequency module. Then this is uh, I don't know what is the term of this PM. So you search on the internet. Next, bandwidth. So bandwidth is the capacity at which a medium can carry data. Digital bandwidth measures the amount of data that can flow from one place to another in a given amount of time. So probably you already know this. Once you are in, uh, interconnected with your internet service provider, you will be having an agreement if what uh, bandwidth subscription you are uh, applying to. So that's uh, that's the measure how, uh, how much will you will you pay for your internet service provider for monthly services. Or, or if you are using your smartphone, 
using your mobile data that will be depends on your internet service provider if uh, what is the bandwidth that can be transferred so uh, the representation for the bandwidth is bits per second so we have the kilobits per second megabits per second gigabit per seconds and terabits per second so bandwidth terminology we have here the latency throughput and good put what is last latency latency is the amount of time including delays for data to travel from one given point to another another is the throughput the measure of transfer of bits across a media over a given period of time and good put the measure of usable data transferred over a given period of time so to, what is the computation so good put so good put is equals to throughput minus the traffic overhead so that will be the terminology for this bandwidth copper cabling oh you are familiar with this the either you'll be using coaxial or unshielded twisted pair or the shielded twisted pair the characteristics of copper cabling so copper cabling is the most common type of cabling used in a networks today so it is inexpensive easy to install and how or and has low resistance to electrical current flow so the limitation for this is the attenuation the longer the electrical signals have to travel the weaker they get why as uh, mentioned during your IT essential course, the UTP and STP can only be used the range of 100 meter. As the signal or electrical signal travels on the wiring, there will be a uh, weaker signals on the end of this 100 meter that's why you need to put a in between repeater if you are uh, want to boost again the signal to the to extend the uh, distance or meter cabling Electrical signals is susceptible to interference from two sources, which can distort and corrupt data signals. So we have here the electromagnetic interference and radio frequency interference. That can be the result of the crosstalk. Now, mitigations, strict adherence to cable length limits will mitigate that innovation. So do, do not maximize your wire into 100 meter or more than 100 meter some kind of copper cabling mitigate electromagnetic interference and radio frequency interference by using metallic shielding and grounding what are those the shielded twisted pair so some kinds of copper cable mitigate crosstalk by twisting opposing circuit pair wires together so they are twisted at the end oh, types of copper cabling we have the unshielded twisted pair shielded twisted pair and a quasher so as you can see we have a the difference of unshielded over the shielded there is an insulator uh, probably this is a foil made of foil or aluminum foil Quaxial, commonly this is used for cable TV or those who have a service provider where the, an internet service provider with cable TV and internet. Unshielded twisted pair is the common media used for networking nowadays. So to terminate those cabling you need a rj45 connector what is rj it's a registered jack 
it means registered jack number 45 for telephone you are using rj11 mm -hmm. the key characteristics of utp the outer jacket protects the copper wire from physical damage so you have an insulator twisted pair protects the signals from interference we have here the white orange orange white green green white blue blue and white brown brown or oh, the color code plastic insulation electrically isolates the wires from each other and identify each pair the shielded twisted pair compared to the unshielded twisted pair you have here an outer jacket a braided foil or foil shield shield a foil shield again for each pair then the colored coded plastic insulator then again you're still using the rj45 connector for coaxial cable you have a outer jacket to prevent the minor physical then you have a woven copper braided a layer flexible plastic and a solid copper wire oh, there are three types of connectors used in coax cable what are these the bnc the n type and f type oh the bnc is it a british nut connector or a binet nut connector oh, look for it there are different types of connectors that's it the common use in a the you the following situation either wireless installation attach antennas to wireless device cable internet installation or customer premises wiring so this is the coaxial cable you'll be using on your television for your antenna and it can be used for the internet service provider that offers cable internet utp cable you already created this during your it essential course uh, with uh, straight through and crossover mm. utp has four pairs of colored copper wires twisted together and in case in a flexible plastic slip oh, you can have a uh, a uh, picture of the cable here mm. next utp cabling standards and connectors you have a cable types cable length connector cable termination and testing for the tia eia 5 six eight standards so what are the five eight six standards you have a t five six eight a and t five six eight b for the combination of your t five six eight a that will be the white green green white orange orange white brown brown or white blue blue but if you are using for straight through example the color combination is white green green white orange blue white blue then orange white brown brown for the uh, t568b you will be using white orange orange then white green white blue oh blue no 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 blue white blue then green white brown brown mm. why the all add numbers are with white stripe all solid color or all uh, even number are solid colors uh, the electrical standards for copper cabling are established by ieee which rate cable according to its performance in uh, example includes category 3 category 5 
and 5E and Category 6. So, we have a cabling standards. Uh, it will depends on your uh, bandwidth. If you are using uh, pass Ethernet, you can use the Category 5 and 5E of STP and UTP. But if you are using a gigabit Ethernet, you need a Category 6. Hmm. UTP cabling standards and connectors, we have the RJ45. We have also a RJ45 socket. Uh, how about the termination? Oh, this is a poor termination. Why? It's already the insulator should be at least uh, in line until here. That is uh, not good crimping. So straight through and cross over. So as I said before, we have a T568A and T568P standard. So you just co need to combine a color code of A and B, both N, to make a crossover. So what are the use of the straight through cable? These are used for uh, for un unlike devices. Example, switch to PC, switch to router, uh, switch to server, or even hub. Hub to router, hub to switch, or no, hub to uh, PC and hub to server. For crossover, you will be using a uh, like devices, PC to PC, PC to router, switch to switch, switch to hub, server to server, or oh, that will be a, or oh, you will be using crossover. So rollover, no rollover are the console cable. Okay. This is, it is a Cisco proprietary who serial port to a router or switch console port. So we already demonstrate that on a packet tracer activity. The use of rollover cable. Fiber optic cabling. So properties of fiber optic. We are using light transmission here. Not as common as UTP because of expensive Ideal for some networking scenarios. So transmit data over a longer distance at higher bandwidth than other networking media because fiber optic can be used for long distance. If the UTP and STP can only be used for 100 meter maximum, so the fiber optic we are talking about kilometers or miles here. So less susceptible to attenuation and complete immune to electromagnetic interference and radio frequency interference. Why? It it does it's not a electrical signal. It uses light signal. So light is uh, susceptible to this uh, interferences. So made of flexible, extremely thin strands of very pure glass. Uses a laser or LED to encode bits as a pulse of light. So that will be a representation of one or zero. The fiber optic cable acts as a wave guide to transmit light between two and with a minimal signal loss. So if you are using a single line or single mode, so that will be a half duplex. If you are using two, one is for transmission, other one is for receiving or two lines. That will be a full duplex transmission. So types of fiber media. So you can see here a, the illustration of fiber. So we have a core, glass core with a pi microns, glass cladding so that the light will not be scattered so that is the class cladding at least 125 microns in diameter then a polymetric coating okay 
a larger core or there will be a, a separate standard for single mode and multi-mode fiber a larger core use less expensive let transmit at a different angles and up to 10 gigabps over 550 meters so we, we will just uh, half kilometer here so dispersion refers to the spreading out of light pulse over time increased dispersion means increased loss of signal strength okay the way we have the mmf this is the multi-mode fiber has a greater dispersion than single mode fiber Oh, with the maximum cable distance for uh, multi-mode fiber is half, almost half, or more than half kilometer. Fiber optic cabling usage. So industries use this cabling for enterprise network. So they will be used for backbone cabling application in interconnecting infrastructure device, the fiber to the home. Uh, you know, you're, you're, most of the uh, fiber industry in oh, the internet service provider right nowadays, they are offering fiber. Long haul networks used by service provider to connect countries and cities. And lastly, the submarine cable network used to provide in reliable high speed, high capacity solution capable of surviving in a harsh undersea environment and up to transoceanic or oh, transoceanic distances. Uh, as I remember, the Philippines is connected to, to Hong Kong. The problem with uh, if we don't have a connections that will be on uh, due to earthquake, probably. Fiber optic connectors. So we have here the straight tips. Uh, look at the picture or the uh, illustration. The Lucent connector, simplex connector. We have the subscriber connector and the duplex multi connectors. on UTP and STP you're just using RJ45 but in the fiber optics there are four types of connector fiber patch cord so a yellow jacket is for single mode fiber cable and orange or aqua for multi mode fiber cable Uh, fiber versus copper bandwidth support uh, for bandwidth for UTP at, at from 10 Mbps to 10 Gbps for fiber we have a 10 Mbps up to 100 Gbps for distance so we have the limitations here are 100 meters whereas for the fiber so we have a 100,000 meters for immunity to uh, electromagnetic interference and radio frequency interference oh, UTP is low but the fiber optics is high so they are completely immune so it, it's this is better for electrical hazards then fiber optic again it's, it's better Media and connector cost, okay. Yeah. The UTP is cheaper than the fiber optic uh, connector. Installation skills, of course, you, you've already made a crossover and straight through during your IT essential course. And where in the fiber, there is, uh, it requires a special device. Uh, especially when you are connecting the two fiber so you need to uh, uh, it's like you're soldering the core safety precautions so lowest 
How about the other one is highest. Okay, you don't you you should not throw the fiber glass uh, on the your garbage can. Oh. Okay, they usually collect those fiber because it's uh, probably uh, it can uh, hurt once you've been uh, uh, what do you call that uh, once you've been pinched yeah. once you've been pinched by this fiberglass wireless media we are on the radio frequency so it carries electromagnetic signals representing binary digits using radio or microwave frequency this provides a greatest mobility option wireless connection number continues to increase so nowadays we have lots of uh, wireless router or probably your internet service provider uh, already have a uh, wireless router modem uh, for you to connect your home device where your smartphone can also provide a um, wireless by clicking your hotspot so that you can uh, share your uh, mobile data internet so some of the limitations of wireless, the coverage area, uh, usually the wireless can only cover 10 meter. If uh, you are checking for the signal, so the, the wall, the your house wall blocks those signals, so it blocks the signal strength. Interference. Wireless is susceptible to interference and can be disrupted by any common device, including your, ano, your window or frame. Uh, it is scattered the uh, reachable frequency once it bumps to an edge. Security. Wireless co uh, communication coverage requires no access to physical strength or media. So anyone can gain access to the transmission for as long as uh, it is unopened. Uh, you can also put a basic security like passwords, uh, the WPA2 passwords. Either you are using an AS or TKIP for encryption. Uh, shared medium, so wireless LAN operates in a half duplex. So this is an disadvantage of wireless. It's like a walkie-talkie. Wait for your turn. So if you are you have a two computer, three computer, so the other one is transmitting, or the other one will be wait for his turn to transmit or receive. Oh, that's not good for IP phone. <laughs> so, types of wireless media. Under IEEE and telecoms industry standard for wireless data communication cover both the data link and physical layer. Each of these standards, physical layers specific dictates data to radio signals encoding method frequency and power of transmission signal reception and decoding requirements antenna design and construction under wireless standards this is uh, ieee 802.11 where in your wire I, the ieee 802.3 for bluetooth we have the 802.15 or the wireless personal area network for WiMAX 802.16, uh, I heard this from the uh, Globe before. They're offering WiMAX. Zigbee, um, under 802.15.4, a da low data rate, low power consumption communication, primarily for Internet of Things, for the IoT. Mm -hmm. uh, access point. Uh, general, in general, a wireless LAN requires 
the following devices. You have a wireless access point and a network interface card. So from your uh, wireless router, then your wireless uh, LAN card will be used for transmitting and receiving. So there are a number of uh, WLAN standards or wireless local area network where purchase the WLAN equipment ensures compatibility and interoperability. Oh, nowadays, the available uh, wireless access point and wireless router are based on uh, N, A, B, C, a, B, G, N, A, C, A, D. Uh, you can buy the, it supports N. Network administrator must develop and apply stringent security policies and processes to protect WLANs from unauthorized access and damage. So from internal threats and external threats, you need to apply passwords for your local area network or you will be using a EAP or EAP server for your uh, username and password repository. In this packet tracer, you will do the following. Ah, we have an activity here. Connect to the cloud, connect to a router, connect to remaining device and verify connection. Examine a physical topology. Another, in this lab, identify the work with PC Nix, identify the use of system tray and icons. So I will demonstrate that later. So what you have learned in this module, so we have learned before any network connection can occur, a physical connection to a local network, either wired or wireless, we will be using the... If you're using wired, you're using the UTP or STP straight, either straight through or crossover. If you're using wireless, probably you're using your mobile data or you're using your wireless local area network. So wireless layer consists of electronic circuitry, media, and connector developed by engineers, the IEEE. Uh, physical layer... Standards addresses three function areas, physical components, encoding, and signaling. Three types of copper cleaving. We have the unshielded twisted pair, shielded twisted pair, and a coaxial cable. Another. Oh, UTP cabling conforms the standards established jointly by the TIA and EIA. And the characteristics of electrical of copper cabling are defined by the IEEE. The main cable types that are obtained by using specific wiring conventions are straight through and crossover. So you've learned the combining the uh, T568A and T568B, you can create a crossover cable. For straight through, you can either use one of the uh, set color code for either you use the both end to end you use the T568A that starts from white green green orange white blue blue then green or orange then white brown brown for your T568B you'll be using the white orange orange white green blue white blue green white brown brown Oh, that will be the straight through. Both ends should be the same color. Mm -hmm. You've learned the fiber optic can transmit a longer distance up to uh, 100,000 meters. So there are four types of fiber optic connectors with the ST, SC, LC, and duplex multi-move. Mm -hmm. Wireless media carry electric electromagnetic signals that represent binary bits or binary digits of data communication using radio or microwave frequencies. Oh. Wireless standards includes the following the wireless fidelity or Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, 
WiMAX and Zigbee. So wireless LAN requires a wireless access point and wireless NICs adapter. Oh, let's do an packet tracer activity before we move on the next discussion. So let's have an activity. Under four or under your laboratory packet tracer activity, you have a two packet tracer activity. Let's try the first. Connect wired and wireless local area network. Ah, it requires us to log in. Uh, let me log in my account. Guys, for the activity, we will be using the Cisco Packet Tracer 7.3. Uh, install them on your uh, desktop or laptop PC. There you go. Uh, for your activity, you need to change the guest into your correct name. If you are submitting your activity to, to your designated instructor. Okay, so what's the goodness with our packet tracer activity? Uh, sometimes they are uh, scenarios from a real life connection. Well, let's have here the table, addressing table. So we have here an IP address connects to a port. We have a device, the interface on the device, and connects to a certain port. So objectives connect to a cloud, well, connect to the cloud, connect router zero, connect remaining device, verify connection, and examining the physical topology. So the background. Instruction, oh, if you are doing your packet tracer activity, follow the procedural or the instruction. Uh, you can see here your completion points. We start at 0%. So at the boat left, click the orange lightning. So bottom left, or oh, this is your bottom left. We have here orange lighting symbol. We have here your cable. You can see here the description. We have here a automatic, the console straight through, copper crossover, fiber, phone, coaxial, uh, serial DCE, serial DTE, octal, Internet of Things and the USB cable. Okay. Choose the correct cable to connect router zero or F zero to cloud Ethernet six. So cloud is a type of switch. So use a copper straight through if you attach the correct cable. So from pass Ethernet 00 to cloud uh, Ethernet, you will be using copper straight through. So what is this? This is your copper straight through. Pass Ethernet 00 to your cloud. 
Ethernet 6. So as your progress, you can see here from 0% to 12%. Uh, it will turn green. Okay. Next, connect the cloud to cable modem. Uh, choose the correct cable to connect cloud coax 7. You need a coaxial cable to modem port 0. Cloud to modem, oh, coaxial cable. This is this coaxial or oh, this one from your coaxial 7 to your cable modem port 0. Okay, there you go, we have 25%. Oh, router. Connect router 0 to router 1. Choose the correct cable to connect. Router 0, serial 0, 0 to router 1, serial 0 slash 0. You need to use the serial cable. Where is the serial cable? This one. From serial 0, 0 to serial 0 slash 0. We have a 37 percent. Next. Choose the correct cable to connect router F01 to connect NetAcad PKA F0. Routers and computers traditionally use the same wire to transmit 1 and 2 and receive 3 and 4. So the correct cable here is you are using a like device which is crossover cable. Okay. The correct cable choose to consist those cross wires and through many network interface card can now uh, auto sense with the pair with the use to transmit and receive. So router 0 and net ACAD PK do not have over sensing network interface card. So connect the F01 using crossover cable F01 to your pass Ethernet. Well, we have now 50%. Next, step 3. Connect router 0 to the configuration terminal. So you'll be using router 0 console to configuration terminal RS232, which is your computer serial port. So on a step three, you have here your configuration. Click here, RS232 to your console. Oh, we are now 62%. Connecting the remaining device. Choose the correct cable to connect router F10 to switch 01 or pass Ethernet 01. Oh, router to switch. You will be using straight through again because this is unlike device. Router. What's the name of router? One. This one. One zero. Oh, you're not using. This symbol is for fiber. Okay. Oh, you will be using the fiber. One zero. Until zero one. It's a fiber optic connection. We have a seventy five now. Connect cable modem to a wireless router. So, uh, cable modem port 1 to wireless router port. Oh, you will need a straight through here. Cable. This one until the internet. Uh, we have now 87 points. 87%. Next, 
connect wireless router to family PC. So choose the correct cable. Okay, if you attach the correct cable, the light on the cable turns green. This is your intern uh, access point and wireless access point. You know that uh, in uh, integrated service router, it functions as three. It is a access point. It is also a switch and a router. So the back of your router, this is your router. This now is acting as a switch. So you might probably uh, think that this is a router to PC you use crossover. Although there's uh, some modern router now, they have their auto MDIX. So in this case, we will be using straight through. Okay. Oh, there you have it. We are now on 100%. So... To verify connection, so let's test. Open family PC command prompt and ping net .pka. This is your family PC. This is your net .pka server. It should be requesting a web page. This is your browser. Let's type net PKA. Go. And let's pass forward the connection. There you go. Uh, the server here responds a web page on your family PC. Next. Ah, you also need a ping. Can we ping? It's already response, so probably it will be ping. The packet internet grouper, ping net akad that pk oh it's now replying okay next ping the switch to the home pc so which your switch this is your switch what is the ip of this switch let's go to your command line let's type the uh, show IP interface brief. Oh, the IP address of this switch is or oh, the switch virtual interface 172.16.0.2. If this is your family PC, let's ping 172.16.0.2. Oh, there you go. There's a reply. Mm. Oh, now, oh, then again, on my previous video, as I told you, the first ping probably will be resulting to timeout because the switch is building a MAC address table. Oh, how is it? Uh -huh. Next. Uh, ping the switch. I oh, already done that. Step three: router zero from configuration terminal. Open a terminal of a configuration terminal. Accept default setting. Press enter to view router zero. Show IP interface. Beep. This is your configuration. You go to terminal. Click OK. You type. Show IP interface script. There you go. You have seen uh, the IP address of this router. 
next. Hmm. Examine the cloud. So click workspace or tab. Oh, this is good. What of the goodness of the uh, Cisco Packet Tracer? Uh, we can view the works uh, workspace. So you can click the Ship P or Ship L. Ship P, you are on the um, physical. You have a physical and ship L for logical. Okay, logical. What uh, what is our objective on this? So click the home city icon, click the cloud, and how many wires connected on switch blue jack? Then click back to home. Oh, you can see if you click the city, you can see now the home your network cloud, primary network, and secondary. Let's examine it. If you click your home PC, uh, you, you need to use the... Uh, on your home PC, uh, you have an example to computer. Why? This is the representation. You have a home PC and family PC, and you have a network printer. Okay, this is your two co desktop computer and your printer. This is your wireless router and your cable modem. Oh, that's good. If you're looking for the cloud, okay, this is the representation of cloud. We have a rack. Uh, a rack that handles those server which we go back to your logical this cloud represents your internet service provider so your internet service provider probably they have a rack then this will be your device so you can also click your device here to view what is the uh, device that is on the rack? Okay, okay. Let's go back. The primary network. Oh, where is the primary network? This will be your primary network. You have a two router, a server, a switch, and a configuration uh, computer. Or probably this is the primary network because we have a secondary. Okay, let's view. So you have a power distribution. Uh -huh. What's this? Oh, you have your router and your server. Okay, this is a net ACAD server. So from here, this is your router, a server, and your terminal computer. Okay, that's good. Next, on the secondary network, you have here. This is your secondary. We have a router and a switch. We have a router and a switch. Okay. Oh, let's go back. Oh, primary. Oh, what's the goodness in this primary? You can see here your serial port. Okay. What is our points? We have a 100% points. I can simultaneously remove this and attach it on the above. <laughs> Then our points will be reduced. <laughs> oh, why? If we go back to your logical, we manage to put the cable on a different setup or different port. So let's turn it back to your port, the correct port. Then check your activity. Okay, it's 100. Okay. You can try to 
change the port using the physical. Well, there you go. So examining, we have already examined the primary network and secondary network. We have the mouse pointer values the cables, we can change the cabling by removing or detaching the cable. Examining the home network, or logical workspace. Okay, you see that we we can see the physical topology here. Okay. Go back. Oh, that's it. We have uh, finished the this activity. How about the other one? Let's test the other one. Connects the physical layer. Oh, let's try to open it. Uh -huh. It requires me again to log on using my account. Okay, let me log in. Oh, let's change this. I will not put now on the email. Okay, let's do the next activity for this uh, module class. So I have here a packet tracer connect a physical layer. So we are just, uh, the objectives is we are just placing the appropriate wiring or uh, modules for this activity. So part one. The objectives is identify physical characteristics of internet working device, select correct mod modules for connectivity, connect the device, check the connectivity. Now let's do this. Part one, identify the physical characteristics of networking, identify the managed ports of Cisco router. Well, we, are, we have a router here, symbol on the east. Click the router and physical tab should be active zoom in the window and see the entire router which manage port are available uh, which LAN and one interface are available for east and how many are there this is the east and show ip interface brick then uh, let's first check if this is your router you can zoom in to look for your available port. You have here your auxiliary port, console port, the two fast uh, gigabit Ethernet, and the USB connections. You have also have a serial connections okay? for you to know what are the uh, available you can connect. Here are the modules. Okay? If you are moving using the module HWIC 1G setup, this will be the module. The WIC 2C, you have a two serial port. You have a four switch port. For WA, oh, this is another port for H synchronous, a cover. Uh, this is for Gigabit Ethernet ports for Cisco Industrial Ethernet Smart Grid Switch Router. Okay. Well, let's go to its command line. Let's type the IP. Oh, no. Show IP interface. Brief. So, yeah, there you go. You can also check your uh, interfaces attached to your Router. We have a 2 gigabit, your serial, and your switch virtual interface. Okay. 
what else oh, you need to check show i show interface gigabit g00 what is the default bandwidth okay let's go back to the east which show ip g0 slash zero ah show ip interface g00 what is the bandwidth uh, you look for the bw or the bandwidth since we are gigabit ethernet automatically this is uh, 1000 mbps or megabits per second bandwidth Where is the bandwidth? Show interface. Ah, no, 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 no. I, I should not include the IP. Show interface G00. There you go. Uh, it's a, that's my mistake. Do you? There is it. The bandwidth. You have a approximately 1 million kilobits or that is one. Also, so if we are converting to megabits per second, we remove that 30 and then come up to 1000 Mbps. So we have a one gigabit Ethernet. Another. So about the serial. Oh, control C. Let's change this to serial. We just create a serial zero. Oh, okay. What you can see on the serial. Oh, the serial, oh, you probably think that, oh, oh, why is it the serial connection is just 1,544 kilobits per second? Remember, we have a note here probably. Oh, this one. The bandwidth of the serial interface is used by routing process to determine the best path to destination. It does not indicate actual bandwidth of the interface. So the Cisco serial uh, connections, we are just using this to simulate wide area network. So, okay. We are just using it to uh, to simulate uh, the internet service provider uh, connections. Okay. Next, identify the module expansion slots. How many slots are available to add modules to each router? What are we talking about? This one. You can add a modules from this slot. The available slot. Okay. How many expansions on a switch to? Where's the switch to? This one. Okay. There is another expansion available here that you can put a module. So either you put a uh one c uh one c e one c f uh c g e f f e c g a f g e and cover there is an expansion available for you to add module uh, Determine which module provide the required connectivity. Click is, then click the physical tab. On the left beneath, you have see a module. Okay. Expand the capabilities router each. Click each module. Picture description display on the bottom. Familiar yourself with this. So I already demonstrate this. So click modules. These are the modules. There are, this is the, uh, illustration of this port okay and we have a description here 
or what module would like to add to your router. Next, the same with switch. I already uh, demonstrated which module you can insert to provide gigabit optical connection on switch 3. This is your switch 3. Oh. Uh, which interface? I show IP interface brief. Oh, you have this a port on your switch hmm. available. Oh, you have a gigabit, two gigabit connections. Next, add or oh, let's now do by uh, the activity by adding the appropriate module. So is click is module and attempt to insert appropriate module from step one. So what is a step one? This one to add by clicking the module by dragging the empty slot. Oh, uh, the cannot add a module when it's power on. Okay, then the device must be turned off. Okay, step 1A done. If you insert a wrong module, you need to remove it by drag and drop. Okay, what is the meaning of that? Uh, example, the, mod, uh, the uh, router is turned on. So we have a switch button here. If we try to add Example, we have a switch here. We are trying to add it. Oh, you cannot add a module when is when the power is on. Okay. You need to turn off the physical router and drag and drop so that you can add now. Then turn it on. Okay. That's uh uh, the procedure wants to you to do. Okay. Using the same procedure, insert the module that you identified in 1B. 1B. This one, switch. You need a gigabit. Ah, okay. Because we have placed the correct module here. Why? Because we have a three computers that needed to be connected here. On a switch, we need to uh, put a correct module for each router to switch one. Oh. But the router requires uh, one is it? Uh, Where are we? Click the power switch to locate a right Cisco logo turn off switch. Show IP interface brief. Okay. We have here your table. Okay. You need a Click switch to module you can insert to provide a gigabit optical. Where is the switch to? Ah, okay. Switch to this one. You need a gigabit. Optical. Is it a gig? Yes. Yeah, by gigabit, turn on. Okay. Oh, let's connect. Let's try to connect. Select the appropriate cable. Uh, click first device, specified interface. Click the second device and select the spec uh, specified interface. If you haven't correctly 
connected to device, you will be seeing a score increase. Okay. Let's use this connection. To connect is to switch one, select copper straight through. Now, we have we, we need to follow the uh, table. On is G00 to switch one, we need a cable. G00 straight through to switch gigabit. We have a gigabit, 00, zero to your gigabit, 10. We have a 7 points. Next, we have a gigabit, 0, 01 until switch 4 straight through. This one, you have gigabit and your gigabit. You have a 15 points. Next, we have a 10, your is uh, to your PC1. Okay, you need to connect a switch again, straight through, because the router is acting as a switch. Let's do the rest. And the other one. The last. Okay. We have the 39 points. We already done here. How about this one? Pass Ethernet 01 to your PC 4. Pass Ethernet 1, 2, 3. They're using straight through. Pass Ethernet 01 to your, from your switch to your PC. Okay. Uh, that's done. That is a 62%. How about this one? You need to use a crossover from switch 4 to your switch 3 crossover you have a 2 and 3 1 gigabit 0 2 and switch 3 1 okay 68 or oh, fiber we need a fiber gigabit 5 1 and 5.1 of switch 2. Gigabit 5.1 and 5.1 of your switch 2. 76 points. Percent. We need a straight through cable from your PC 2 or switch 2 to PC 7. So, and the rest. I need to put a straight through from your switch. There you go. Uh huh. Oops. Oh, why there's no more cable? PC9. Oh, there is a mistake here we need to delete that switch 3 why is it PC9 uh -huh. where am I Switch to. Oh, I am mistakenly put not following the order. I click delete if you are mistake mistakenly put a wrong cable. You need to connect PC to uh, switch to. Uh, that's my mistake. 
Okay, okay. And a fiber. Gigabit to your gigabit. Then, you need to attach a serial. Oh. You have here a switch to gigabit. You need a copper to your port zero. Oh, there's still a computer. You have a gigabit to your port. Okay. Next. You need to connect uh, serial to your east to your west. Okay, we have here a serial zero zero to your serial zero zero. Okay, that's it. Why it's 92? Probably we need to connect this one. Okay. Uh, part 4 connectivity. On your east, you need to type show IP interface brief. Let's go on command line. Show IP interface brief. Okay. Then you can see now they're on. We are not using the serial here. Next. Connect or this one. Let's connect the laptop. We need to connect the laptop to your wireless zero by turning on the port. Uh, if this is your laptop, you need to go to um, config wireless zero let's drag this there you have it turn on okay it's already connected mm -hmm. next on your tablet we need to connect the tablet and turn on same as well as your uh, what they call this your 4G and 3G SIM your mobile data let's go to desktop config your wireless turn on turn on and turn it on Oh, the tablet connected to two internet service providers. Okay. Oh, my, oh, there's some mistake. What is my mistake? Let's check result. What am I? The PC7 switch to. PC7. Oh, what uh, what I have done here? Switch to to PC7. Pass Ethernet 01. This is pass Ethernet 01. It's correct. Let's do the pass forward. Let's close this. Why is it there's a mistake here? Let's check again. From my Switch to to PC seven. Another mistake is from 
switch to to PC 8 ah uh, no PC 9 PC 9 Okay What is my mistake there? Okay. Ay. I thought this is PC7. It's 987. I thought this is 789. Okay. Okay. I interchange the cabling. My mistake. Okay, there you go. Perfect. We have a 100% score. Mm -hmm. so that's the end of this packet tracer activity. Let's move on to the next topic. What's that? Why it's a... Uh, there's a bug. Next topic. Numbering system. Oh, you already know this. Uh, probably you already have an exercise during your senior high and elementary on the numbering system. So numbering system, calculate the numbers between decimal binary and hexadecimal because uh, we are using decimal for inputting IP address of your computer or oh, there's a maximum of 255 from 0 to 255 but then again those numbers are represented to your computer either it a binary and hexadecimal because the IP version 6 is using decimal system so the binary system calculate the number or oh, this is our objectives calculate numbers and between decimal and binary system calculate numbers between decimal and hexadecimal we are just converting oh, that's why binary and ip before addresses binary number system consists of one and zeros called bits decimal numbering system consists of zero to nine or oh, zero through nine server Net, uh, host and network equipment using binary addressing to identify each other. So because you are using IP version 4. Uh, each address is made up of string of 32 bits. Why? We are a 4 octet binary because we are using a dotted system. Example of your IP address is 192.168.0.1. So each number on that represent 8 bits. That's why the maximum number for 8 bits is 255. Uh, each octet contains 8 bits or a 1 byte separate by dot. For ease of use of people, this dot notation is converted to dotted decimal. Okay. Numbering system. Uh, we have the binary position notation. So as you can see, we have a 0, 1, 2, 4, uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, but uh, if we are computing this, is 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, and 1, 2, 8. That's the maximum number for a uh, uh, adding up to make a 255. Okay, we have here a 1, tens, hundred, thousands. For binary position notations, uh, we have here 2 raised to 8. Okay. 0, 1, 2, 4. Ah, what do you call this? Oh, this is 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 1, 2, 8. Hmm. Okay. Converting. How will we convert? So by summing up all the placement of 1, example of this. 192. Why? Because there is a series of zeros. 64 plus 28 is 192. Oh, how about 68? 
you look for this is 8 plus 32 that is 40 plus 128 168 11 why right. this is 1 plus 2 that is 3 plus 8 11 okay 10 this is 2 plus 8 is 10 okay that's the how we convert uh, decimal to binary. So the binary position value table is useful in converting that decimal to IPB, IPB for address to a binary. Okay. Why binary is important? Kasi, uh, because uh, we need sometimes we need to look for the network address and we are using the binary ending so that we can determine which network your ip belongs based from your subnet mass okay we will be discussing that sooner so decimal to binary conversion example if you want to convert 168 is greater than 128 then if yes then we are just dividing it by 2 and get the remainder okay IPB for address. So that's why there is a 32 bits. We have 8 bits here, 8 bits here, 8 bits here, 8 bits. Or we have a 4 octet binary. Well, this is 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 octet binary separated with dots. Okay. We have that here, that there. Oh. Hexadecimal number. Why? Because of the IP version 6. So hexadecimal and IPv6. So, IP version 4, previously we have a 32 bits address. Whereas on IP version 6, we have a 128 bits address. So imagine that if you're using a dot head, uh, that's too many. So we need to reduce that by using the hexadecimal system. So hexa from 0 to F, there's no, the number 10 here on the decimal will be representing letter A, okay? 11 will be UB, 12 UC, and so on until you come up to F, okay? Oh, uh, the uh, hexadecimal is also equivalent to 4 bits binary, as you can see here, we have a 4 bits binary. If you add 1, 2, 4, 8, that is 15. Okay. How about let, uh, 10? Uh, 0, 2, 4, 8. The 8 plus 2 is 10. That is letter A on an hexadecimal. Oh, here's an example of I IPB6 address. Okay. We have a four bits, four bits, four bits until we come up to a uh, 128 bits address. Now uh, we have a separate discussion for the uh, IP version 4 and IP version 6. So we are just uh, starting with the conversion here. Okay. Decimal and hexadecimal versions. So, uh, well, convert the number to 8 bits to binary string. So by, divide the binary strings to group of 4 to the rightmost position. Convert each 4 binary numbers to equivalent hexadecimal number. So what is the... Uh, representation of this. Uh, let's make an example. Let's try to use Excel so that we appreciate what our, what is the decimal number and the uh, let's say one 
2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Oh, this will be a representation of our binary. Example, I want to place a border. Let's place this as your equivalent. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 1 to 8. Okay. There. What if I want a, I want to compute for an ad, uh, a decimal of 200. Let's say this is a decimal. Like 200. So what are the combinations I need? for a binary let's say this is a binary to come up to a result of 128 so i need a 128 plus 64 128 plus 64 that is almost 192 okay why oh, this is equals to 128 plus 64 we have a 92, 192. Oh, I need 8 more to come up to 200. Oh, this is plus 8. Oh, we have a 200. Okay. 200. That is 128 plus 64 plus so what will you do now is the rest of no value we will be placing zero so that is 200 now on a hexadecimal okay the hexadecimal is representing four bits of your um, four bits binary so if we are looking for a value of to by a decimal to hexa, we can simply use as this as one, two, four, eight, then one, two, four, eight of your binary. So this is your binary here. Uh, let's place a some thick border so that we you can see the border that this will be your let's merge it let's merge merge we have now here your hexa decimal system so your hexa here we need to take, look for the value of your binary. This is uh, 8 plus 4 is 12. So 12, now, what is uh, the value of 12? Oh, let's place it 12. Uh, about this one. This is 0, 0, 0, 1, which is 8. Uh, are we going to use 12, 8? No. 12 now. Oh, let's put your... Uh, let's finalize this. Let's create a merge here. And another merge here. Oh. oh. That one. So letter, we have a letter A, letter B, letter C, letter D, E, F. So as we know, the representation of 10, this will be your representation of 10, 11, on your decimal. Okay, the 12 now comes up to letter C, therefore... This is C8. So your hexa value now 
for 200 will be C8. Okay. There you go. Oh, I compute. Oh, we can also use the calculator of the Microsoft. Let's say calculator. You select the programmer. There you go. We have hexa, decimal, octal, and binary. Let's click decimal. If you place 200, so this will be your equivalent hex C8. We have C8, your binary, 1100, 1100, then 1000, 100. Okay. Okay. That's good. Let's move on. Oh, there you have it. How to convert using Excel, or you can also use the calculator. What did I learn in this module? Oh, binary is based to two numbering system that consists of zero and ones called binary. The decimal is based on ten numbering system that consists of zero to nine. Uh, binary is what hosts and servers and network equipment use to identify each other because we are using the IP address and subnet mask. And for IPv6, we are using hexadecimal. So from hexadecimal, you learn that this is from 0 to 9 and A to F. Hexadecimal is used representation of IPv6 and MAC address. Why? Because you are previous uh, demo, if you try to check on IP config slash all, you can see here my MAC address E8 or E0652 C5 and 11. That means this is a 48 bits uh, MAC address. Okay. We have a 48 because it represents 4 bits plus 4 bits. That is 8 bits. If you uh, compute 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Six, 6 times 8 is 48. So 48 bits address are also used for MAC address. Okay. Now next. Ah, anyway, we, are, we don't have a packet tracer activity for the chapter 5. Okay. We are just uh, computing. Oh. Oh. Next, chapter six, data link layer. We are now moving on the layer two of our OSI model. Or partly, this is a network access under the TCP IP model. So module two objectives is to describe the purpose and function of the data link layer in preparing communication for transmission for a specific media. Compare the characteristics of media and access control methods of wide area networks and local area networks. Describe the characteristics and function of data link frame. So what is the purpose of data link? So uh, as we mentioned before uh, the, our previous video, uh, we have demonstrated the use of uh, Wireshark. You can see that there's uh, Ethernet 2 uh, segment that we can see that the, there is a source I, uh, MAC address and destination MAC address. Okay, The data link is the layer that handles those uh, terms. So, it allows upper layer protocol to access the physical layer media and encapsulates layer 3 packets. Because of the encapsulation, layer uh, data link is framed. Then on the top of the protocol data unit, that will be the packet. And packet is under for IPv4 and IPv6 as well as the ICMP. It also performs error detection and rejects corrupt frames. Because we have here the frame check sequence and the 
sa cyclic redundancy check. Okay. I triple E eight o two that this is eight o two that three because it handles the uh, local area net for for wiring for uh, wireless eight o two that eleven and W pan is eight o two that fifteen. The so data link layer consists of two sub layers. We have the logical link control or LLC and the media access control or the MAC address. Okay, you have here the uh, MAC address sub layer. These are the uh, standards that we use. Okay. Packet exchange between nodes and experience, may, may experience numerous data link and media transition. Why? As we uh, have uh, or our previous discussion, once the frame is moving from a intermediary device to another intermediary device, the destination MAC address is stripped off and the uh, new MAC address of the destination will be placed. Uh, we are not, uh, the source uh, MAC address will still remain, but for the destination, it been stripped up and replaced by the next uh, hub device. Uh, packet, uh, as each hub along the path, the router performs four basic Two function accepts a frame from network medium, de encapsulates the frame to expose uh, encapsulated packet because the router used the source and destination IP. Uh, re encapsulates the packet into new. Why? Because it na will place the des new destination uh, MAC address, forwards the new frame to a medium to the next network segment. Okay. Data link layer standards, the data link layer uh, protocols are defining by in engineering organizations under the IEEE, the ANSI, ITU, and the ISO. Oh, let's go to topologies. So topology of a network is arrangement and relationship of the network device and interconnect between them. We have a two uh, types of topology, physical and logical topology so we, we, we are repairing for the physical the actual setup of the wiring of your host and intermediary devices whereas if you are talking about the logical topology we are repairing to the addressing schemes example of these are your ipv4 ipv6 and your mac address for the logical okay. the wide area network topologies we have a point to point Hub to spoke and mesh network. So point to point, or these are the router to router example. Uh, the simplest and most common wide area network consists of permanent link between two endpoints. So previously on our demonstration, we used the serial connections for point to point. Okay. Hub and spoke. Oh, similar to star topology where central site interconnects branch sites through points to points. For example, you have a three branches connected to your central uh, connections or central router. Probably your router have a three serial ports. Each serial ports connect to your branch. That is point to point. Point to point for each branch, but since the branch can also connect or can mm, transmit and receive a connection from branch to branch, uh, the in-between router of your central office or head office is acting like a forwarder server or a central server. A mesh provides a high quality but requires very end to be connected to each other. Mesh is a very expensive uh, topology. Why? Uh, if there is a disruption of service or out of service, it's a, there will be a um, redirection that the connection should be active 
it's something like uh, uh, this are uh, switching device if there is a downfall of a internet connection example you have a two internet service provider you are using the globe telecom and the smart telecom uh, once the globe telecom is down then the active uh, the router will switch to the active uh, transmission where this is your smart uh, if, if the smart is your secondary or vice versa uh, it's like your um, what do you call that load balancing uh, okay well this is the simulation uh, of point to point one so previously on our packet tracer as I told you, the serial connections can be uh, used to simulate the wide area networks. Oh, oh, we have a serial to serial connection here, example. Next, LAN topology. So we, we have here an end devices of LAN and typically interconnect using star or extended star topology. As you can see on our illustrations, we have here a star topology. Probably in between here, you have your switch. Next here, your extended star. Or oh, you have a extended star. Probably you have a switch in between here and switch here. You are using a crossover cable to connect switch to switch. Uh, the bus topology is already paced out, but since it's a legacy, uh, okay, you'll be using a termination here. Oh. It's like a uh, bus where the packet will be transmitted using a one single line connections. On a star topology or ring topology, uh, in order for a specific computer to transmit and receive a information or a packet, it requires the computer to have a token. So the token is moving uh, across the network, but whoever have that, that token is the one only capable to transmit or receive a message so it's like uh, I'm hand uh, if you have uh, classmates uh, if uh, the one who handle ball pen is the one can only talk or receive a message uh, the other one is listening like that so that's the ring topology Half and full duplex, so if we are talking about half duplex, it's like a walkie-talkie. Someone is transmitting, then you wait for your turn. For to, you wait for your turn to clear the, uh, the transmission. Okay. Whereas the full duplex, the transmit and receive are the same time. You can transmit and receive at the same time. Imagine you are talking to your friend with walkie-talkie so you press the transmit the other one should defaultly uh, receive the message so it's a uh, like one way the other one is transmitting the other one is receiving for full duplex it's like you're communicating with your cell phone you can simultaneously talk to your friend at the same time you both of you are talking you receive and transmit at the same time that's the full duplex. Okay. Why is it important on the computer? As I mentioned before, uh, wireless local area network or using the career sense multiple access over collision avoidance is a half duplex. Whereas for the wired, that's why wired is better than wireless because default, the wire is full duplex. Okay. Oh, Contentions-based access, a node operating is half duplex, competing for those uh, use of the medium. Examples are, oh, I already said this. Well, carrier sense multiple access with collision detections. This is used for your uh, wide connections. 
uh, for carrier sense multiple access with collision avoidance for this is for wireless control access determine deterministic access where each node has its own time on the medium uh, use the legacy network such as token ring and artnet no, this this is already based out the token ring uh, uh, the CSMACD, which is the carrier sense multiple access over collision detection, use the legacy Ethernet local nets, operates in half duplex where one device sends and receive at the same time. Oh, why is it? Use the collision detection process to govern when a device can sense what? Oh, they said here that uh, CS. MACD is a half duplex, so uh, I stand corrected. Okay. The CSMACD collision detection process transmitting simultaneously will result to a signal collision over on a shared media. The, the device detects the collision, the device waits for a random period of time. Oh, it's, it's just like a if you both transmit the uh, connections so imagine you are using walkie talkie uh, you have three friends and two of your friends transmit the same uh, they are using trans uh, they transmit at the same time their message so uh, there will be a garbled message on your frequency that's why if you do, if the recipient or the receiver did not catch up or receive the message, uh, he will probably say, oh, "Let's wait for a time first." <laughs> okay. Under the collision uh, avoidance, 802.11, it operates half duplex, as I said before. Uh, use collision avoidance process to govern when device can send and what happens if multiple device sends at the same time. Collision avoidance process. Uh, when transmitting, device also includes the time duration needed for that transmission. Other device on the shared medium receive the time duration information and know how long the medium will be unavailable. Okay. Okay. If you are downloading uh uh, great files or bigger size files while other if you're using wireless on your home uh, that will be a uh, can cause disruption of service to your other mate on your home when there you are both using your Wi-Fi connections uh, data link frame uh, Data is encapsulated by the data link layer with a header and trailer to form a frame. Okay, the data link frame has three parts. So you have a header, data, and a trailer. It's like a starter, then the in between information, then a trailer. A trailer for checking. The fields of a header and trailer vary according to the data link layer protocol. The amount of control information carried with the frame varies according to access, control information, and logical topology. So here is it, the illustration of header and trailer. You can see here the frame start and the frame end. I'll stop frame. We have here the address. Probably the, you will be putting here your source MAC address, source, destination MAC, source IP, and destination IP. Type, control, have a data here, your packet. Okay. Oh. The type identifies encapsulated layer 3 protocol. Okay. The data contains frame payload, error detection, okay. begin and end for the frame start, frame end. Oh, let's say, look at here. Oh, layer 2 addresses also referred to a physical address. That is your MAC address contained in a frame header used only for local delivery and frames to the link. I already demonstrated this using the Wireshark before. Updated by each device that follows the frame. 
So if you look at the frame here, from destination NIC to source NIC, we have a L2 header, then L3 IP or layer 3 IP, source IP and destination IP. So it's like encapsulating and the encapsulating process. So logical topology and physical media determines the data link protocol used Ethernet 802.11, point to point, or high level data link control and frame relay. Or by default, the serial connections of your Cisco router is under high level data link control. Okay. Each protocol performs media access control for specified logical topologies. Let's have a quiz. Oh, we already moved to an end. So what did I learn in this module? So what we have learned from the data link layer of the OSI model, the layer 2 prepares network data for the physical network. Also, data link is responsible for interface, network interface card or your LAN card to network interface card. Oh, that is NIC. The 8, 8, uh, IEEE 802.LAN-MAN oh, because we have uh, talking about three. That, that three, that, that 15, that 11. Okay. We have a sub-layer the logical link control and the media access control. Two types of topologies, we have the physical and the logical, wherein this is your physical equipment or intermediary devices or your uh, physical host interconnected to the, your uh, intermediary devices, whereas the logical is we are talking about the addressing, whether this is your IP version 4, IPv6, or your MAC address. Uh, three common types of physical one, we have the point-to-point, uh, -point, hub to spoke and mesh, hub to plex communication exchange data in one direction at a time. So it's like uh, the upload and download are not the same. It's like that. Uh, whereas the uh, full duplex sense and receives data simultaneous or the upload and download at the same time, uh, like that. Uh, in contention-based multi-access network, all nodes are operating in hub duplex. Examples of contention-based access method includes career sense multiple access over collision detection for bus topology. Uh, okay, uh, I stand corrected again for the you can also do full duplex on a wire for those star topology. Uh, I already recalled. But for bus topology, that's default hub duplex, okay? Pero for uh, uh, wired, it's still a full duplex except for bus topology. And that's, that's the correct one. Uh, the data link frame has three basic parts, the header, data, and trailer. Uh, the frame includes start frame and, and stop indicator, plug, address and type, control, data, and error detection. The data link address are also known as a physical address, so as in, that is also the MAC address. The data link address are only used for link local delivery frames. Uh, chapter 7. We're now moving on to chapter 7. That's the objective. The, uh, explain how Ethernet sublayers are related to the frame build. Describe the Ethernet MAC address. Explain how switch build its MAC address table and forward frames. Describe switch forwarding methods and port setting available on switchboard. Okay, that's, that's Ethernet frame. Ethernet encapsulation. So what an encapsulation still? We are talking about frames to bits because the data link handles the frame for physical. We are changing it to bits under the protocol data unit. 
So Ethernet operates in data link layer and the physical layer. It is a family of network interval technologies defined in IEEE 802.2 and 802.3 standards. 802.2 is for the logical link control. MAC address is for uh, 802.3. Okay, we, have, we already encountered this previously illustration for logical link control sublayer and MAC address, uh, MAC sublayer. Okay. Oh, what is the responsible? Oh, place for logical link control sublayer, place information in the frame to identify which network layer protocol is used for frame. Whereas the MAC sublayer responsible for data encapsulation and media access control and provides data link layer addressing okay. what are those those are the source i uh, source mac destination mac mac sublayer is responsible for data encapsulation and accessing the media because what media will be used? Are you use? Are you referring to use the fiber optic, the electrical pulse from your STP and UTP cable or coaxial, or are we using the radio frequency from your wireless network? Okay, the data encapsulation. I triple eight eight data encapsulation includes we have here uh, Ethernet frame, Ethernet addressing, and Ethernet error detection for the frame check sequence, okay? Next, media access. The IEEE 802.3's MAC sublayer includes specification for different Ethernet communication standards over various types of media, including copper and fiber. I already told this before that the data link uh, MAC sublayer determines what media are you're using to transfer or receive your message. Under the legacy, oh, this one will be half duplex for the bus topology only eh? because we have other topology like star, uh, extended star, they are using uh, full duplex by default. Only the bus topology is half duplex. So, Ethernet lines of today use switches that operates in full duplex. Full duplex communication with Ethernet switch to do not require access control through carrier sense multiple access over collision detection. We have here the uh, illustration for the Ethernet frame fields. We have the preamble, destination MAC, source MAC, the type of length or the data, and the frame check sequence. Okay. Any frame less than 64 bytes in length is considered collision fragment or front frame. And this is automatically discarded. So where is it? Another. If you imagine, if you have a 64 bytes uh, below 64 bytes, that, that that frames received by your computer or switch will be automatically discarded. So this is your minimum frame. Uh, if the size of transmitted frame is less than the minimum or greater than the maximum, oh, it, the receiving device drops the frame. Or if you are greater than uh, 1,518 bytes, that's the time that your computer or switch will drop either below from the range or greater than the range. All of those frames are dropped. Okay. We have a laboratory activity. Uh, the laboratory activity here is already, we've already done that before on your, uh, during demonstration of the first video, uh, wherein I already checked this uh, Ethernet to frame from our captured wire shark. 
So please watch our previous video if you want to refresh on how to use the Mac, uh, the Wireshark. Ethernet MAC address. Uh, the MAC address is a 48-bit address. I already demonstrated that before using your ipconfig slash all command. But you can see that there is a 48 bits address. And each bit is, uh, represents or uh, each number from that uh, MAC address is representing a hexadecimal, which you can also convert it into a binary. Okay. Uh, get MAC address. Let's try this one. Windows R, CMD, yeah, we can check for con IP config slash all. Uh, you can see here my MAC address. Again, uh, let's say get MAC if I'm correct. Or uh, you can also uh, type get MAC so that you can. Uh, get your physical address, okay? Or uh, for your router, to see your what is the MAC address of your router. Uh, let's try again the ARP A. This is my router. You can also see your MAC address here. So the F F F F F. Yeah, this is for your broadcast MAC address, okay? Let's go back. Uh, this is your uh, 48-bit address. I already told you. Oh, we have here. Uh, we have the OUI. It's been divided by 2. If you have using port 8, 24 bits will be your organizational unique identifier that identifies what uh, what they call this uh, uh what is the maker or manufacturer of your uh, MAC address? Okay. Hmm. Uh, how do we know that? Well, let's check this out. Hmm. Uh, you can use your smartphone. Uh, if you're using your smartphone, you can also download a uh, application from your Google app App Store that can trace your MAC address or the entire MAC address who use on your uh, uh, network. Let's say could I search for internet. Uh, let's try this. Let me use the browser. Uh, let's test. I'm just testing. Who the manu pak jurel of mac address e8 for e and just testing eh? i don't know if we can we can get a result from this e8 for e Zero six. If we are just looking for the uh, vendor, e eight four e. We have here. Let's check. Here we have a vendor. Okay, you can see the vendor of our MAC address is the EDUP International Hong Kong Co LTD. This is the maker of the MAC address. Okay, that's good. We already checked. 
How about the MAC address of our uh, router? Where is our router? This one. We have here a uh, 3C. 3C. What's that? DF. DF. A9. Let's search. Oh, it is a maker of RS Group Incorporated. Okay. There you go. You can use your uh, browser to check the uh, OUI or the manufacturer of your local or your MAC address. Mm, that's good. Next, frame processing. So when a device is forwarding message to uh, an Ethernet network, the Ethernet frame includes source MAC and destination MAC. When the NIC receives uh, Ethernet frame, it examines the destination MAC to see if match the physical address that's stored in the RAM. If there is no match, the device discards the frame. If there is a match, then it passes the frame to OSI when the encapsulation takes. It's just a matter of, if, example, this is your computer. You are transmitting a message uh, from your H4. And uh, since we are using switch, uh, you know, the switch is very intelligent. Example, if this is hub, uh, let's replace this one as a hub. If that uh, hub will broadcast all those uh, frames, those who receive uh, the frames that the destination frame is not for them, they will discard that. Only those, uh, the target destination will accept the frame. But since we are using the switch, it's very intelligent. Uh, switch already know where to forward that uh, uh, frame. For example, if this is pass Ethernet 01, there are two computers. I don't know. Probably you have a hub here, example. The, you are, this computer trying to transmit message to H4. Example, you have a hub here. It will broadcast into two. So the one will, uh, H2 will discard that uh, frame where in the H4 computer will be receiving that frame for the encapsulation. Okay. That's if we have an in between hub here. So that's the uh, reason for uh, frame dropping and receiving. Unicast MAC address. In the Ethernet, different MAC address are used for layer 2 unicast, broadcast, and multicast. Uh, we have already mentioned that before. If you are using for unicast, uh, there is a peer-to-peer -peer connection. Where is for the broadcast, like uh, I said before, on the... Uh, address the FFFF that is a broadcast. The all computer who received that uh, broadcast address must respond to that receiving frame. They will process that frame. For the unicast, selected groups of computer or devices will be respond on that frame. Okay. Uh, Oh, you have here the address resolution protocol. I've already typed that before on a CMD, the ARP-A. Okay, so that you can know the MAC address of a specific IP address. Hmm. Ah, this is what I've told before. The FFFF, the 48 bits app, is for use for the broadcast. Okay. Uh, multicast. How will we example? Uh, what's the example of uh, broadcast? Uh, let's let's try CMD again. If you are using a Microsoft and 
I don't know if I have a uh, uh, I don't have attached computer on the network. So usually if you want to send a broadcast message over a network, you can use Microsoft message message then asterisk that means to all then your message For example i want to say hello you know, you all the uh, what group or on the domain that your computer will belong will receive this message and if you examine this on the packet tracer you will see the fffff this one okay. you try it on using your uh, computer with the Wireshark and test. Multicast. Okay. Uh, an Ethereum multicast frame is received and processed by a group of device that belongs to the same multicast group. There is a destination MAC address of a 01005B. Uh, Remember this, if you have a MAC address of, that starts with 01005B under OUI, that is used for multicast. Okay? There is a range for that. When the encapsulated data in the IPB for multicast packet and destination MAC address of 33-33, then encapsulate the data is an IPv6 multicast packet. Uh, there is, uh, there are other reserved multicast destination MAC address when encapsulated data IP not is not IP, such as spanning tree protocol. Uh, you will learn this spanning tree protocol on your uh, Net2 class. It is plotted out all Ethernet switch port except the incoming port. Unless the switch is configured to multicast snooping. Because the multicast address represent group of addresses, they can only be used as a destination packet. Uh, the source will always be unicast address. Uh, while as with the unicast and broadcast addresses, the multicast IP address requires a corresponding multicast address. Uh, uh, probably we will experience that on your net two class once we are on the spanning tree protocol. What's this laboratory activity? Uh, MAC address table. Uh, switch fundamentals layer two. Ethernet switch uses layer two MAC address table to make forward uh, decision. Okay, uh, we will demonstrate that using the packet tracer. Okay, it's the switch makes it forwarding decision based solely on the layer two switch address. The layer two switch examines the MAC address table and forwarding decision for the frame, unlike legacy Ethernet hubs, repeats result because the hubs are not intelligent. It, the hub usually broadcasts it on the port. Okay, the, we have a content addressable memory or the CAM table. Okay, examine the source MAC address, learn. Okay, every frame enters the switch, check the information to learn. What are the MAC, uh, the switch learning? It, it learns the MAC address. Okay. Destination, find the destination MAC address forward. Okay. That will be based from the MAC address. Filtering frames. As a switch receive frames from different devices, it is able to populate its MAC address table by examining the source to every frame. When the MAC address frame table is switched contains destination MAC address, it is able to filter the frame and forward to the single port. And that is uh, if the MAC, a specific computer uh, is messaging the other computer, the switch will create a CAM table. So once he learned already the addresses of the 
destination so it will forward all the frames for that specific destination what's this mac address tables connect switch video covering let's try it on the let's try it on the packet tracer sending a frame to a default gateway if the video covers or oh, you need to in order for you to watch this use your cisco net account and browse and uh, do an activity on your cisco net account for this network one you can watch video from their links to show you the representation of the data transmission over a switch. Speed forwarding, why not we demonstrate that? Let's demonstrate it using the packet tracer. Okay. Let's log on. Oh, this requires me to log on. Hi, why? The site is not available. Ah, it's not receiving. Let's try to. Oh, this again. There we go. Let me log on to my account. Yes. Okay. Uh, example, we have a switch here. Let's drag a switch. And... A computer. We have a. Oh, let's try that. We have a computer here. Let's demonstrate to computer. Let's connect it using a straight through cable. Okay. Let's say the IP address. Oh, let's say this is. Uh, Let's say this is 192.168.1.1 slash 24. Let's say this one is 192.168.1.2 slash 24. The slash is the uh, representation of the subnet mask. Okay? Oh, let's do it. Uh, desktop, let's create a 192.168. That is 1.1. One one. Oh, let's place an subnet mask. How about the other one? And let's place 192.168.1.2. That one that one that Oh, there you go. As I told you before, if we ping the address using the switch, it will create a request timeout because it will broadcast. Ping 192.168.1.2. From computer here, we are trying to check the connectivity here. It will response. Oh, yeah, it will already response. Okay. But uh, the switch already captured the MAC address we have placed. Uh, let's try. Uh, is there a hub here? I don't know if the hub is still available on the uh, packet tracer. Uh, no. I did this one. We have a hub here. 
Switch to have, we will be using crossover cable so that we can examine uh, the uh, MAC address. Okay, let's check. Okay, the CAM table enable. Let's show, let me show MAC address table as you can see on the past Ethernet. 01 this is the mac address of your computer this is the mac address of your computer here why if i type ip config slash all my mac address is this is my physical address okay let's compare it to the switch MAC address this is pass Ethernet 01 okay they are the same okay what happened if we are using a hub okay let's place another two computer here let's say this is a 192.168 1.3 and the other one is 192.168.1.4 okay let's create or put an IP address 192.168.1.3 okay and the other one is 192.168 1.4 okay let's create a wire hub still you are using a straight through cable so what will happen to the switch if we try to ping the 1.3 now uh, it's now replying Okay, about 1.4, 1.4, .4. okay, it's now replying. No. The PC here is trying to connect here. So what will happen if we are using hub? So let's go back to MAC address table or the CAM table. As you can see here. On your pass Ethernet tree, there are two computers. Okay. Let's show it. References. Let's show the port label. Oh, you have a pass Ethernet 03 here. It shows that under your pass Ethernet tree, you have a two MAC address available the MAC address of this okay, IP config slash all oh, IP config okay uh, the MAC address of this 92 compare it to your switch why don't want okay uh, they are the same okay. uh, and so with the other ip config slash all uh, if you examine the mac address from your switch that is the other one okay well there you have it let's go back to you yeah. uh, switch speeds and forwarding method so store forward and forward switching and the cut through switching so by default the cisco router is using the cut through switching okay or oh, the differences 
is that the store forward frame forwards method receives the entire frame so it requires the uh, switch to receive the entire frame before it power to the destination address so that's why it requires memory it requires storing okay store first the frame then forward to the destination whereas the cut through the frame forwards the frame before it it entirely receives the frame so once he receive a chunk of frames as long as they see the destination it already transmitted to the destination it's up to the destination to uh, uh, check or completely uh, receive the frame okay the big advantage of store forward switching is that it determines if the frame has an error. So since the uh, switch is receiving all the frames, so it, uh, the frames already check if there's an error before it will be forward to the destination. Okay. The store forward switching requires a quality of service because uh, the error has been reduced. Uh, this typically we use that store forward to the voice over IP. Okay, so the cut through switching we have a two. We have the pass forward switching and fragment pre switching. So as mentioned here, uh, the pass forward offers the low level latency. So this is better, wherein the fragment pre is high latency and high integrity of store forward switching and low latency and reduce integrity of pass forward switching okay so that, that's the difference between the two okay latency means the delay okay so at least on uh, using pass forward uh, we have a uh, uh, smaller or less delay compared to the fragment pre uh, memory buffering on switches for store power. We have the port-based memory and shared memory. Okay. For port-based memory, frames are stored in queues that and that are linked to the specific incoming outgoing ports. The frame is transmitted to the outgoing port when all frames ahead in the queue are being successfully transmitted. Okay. Whereas the shared memory deposits all frames into a common memory buffer shared by all switch port and amount of buffer memory required by all ports by dynamically allocated. And so shared memory buffering are also results in larger frames that can be transmitted with a pure drop of frames. This is important with asymmetric switching, which allows you the different data rates on different ports. Therefore, more bandwidth can be dedicated on certain ports. Well, that is a memory buffering on switch. Duplex and speeds. So I already discussed this on previous uh, this uh, chapter, the duplex and half duplex, but you can uh, configure that on your switch. Let's go back to our switch. What am I talking about? If this is your switch, with a show uh, running config, you can see we are using pass Ethernet. As we all know, the pass Ethernet switch of the uh, switch or the pass Ethernet port of switch is uh, transmitting maximum of 1, 000, uh, 100 Mbps. 100 Mbps. But we can also reduce the bandwidth of that port by simply uh, commanding its speed. Example, let's go to configure terminal. We know that the pass Ethernet is transmitting 100 Mbps. Okay. Interface pass Ethernet 0, 01. Oh, I forgot to put the space, the current shows. We are on the pass Ethernet 01. You can use the question mark. 
Okay. What are the available? You can see the CDP, channel group, channel protocol, description, duplex. Here, the duplex. We also have the spanning tree speed. Configure speed operation. Okay. If you try to put speed here, then question mark, we will be forcing a 10 Mbps, 100 Mbps. Since we are using uh, uh, pass Ethernet, we are by default 100 Mbps. I want to reduce that to 50 Mbps. Oh, it's not working. Why? The only choice you can do is to reduce that to 10 Mbps. 10. So therefore, the, your pass Ethernet now has a connection of 10 Mbps. Okay. So how about the uh, duplex? Oh, you type duplex here. By default, the duplex is full duplex. But you can change it to half duplex. Oh, by default, is auto. Because it's there is a negotiation between the port. Okay. Oh. We can now duplex half. Example, you want to change it to half duplex. Okay, it will really change. If you don't want, we simply put duplex. If you, you can also use no duplex half or you can return it to duplex auto. Either of the two, you can do that. Okay. So let's go back. So that will be the duplex duplex settings so we i already told you that uh, you cannot combine a duplex the other one is full duplex and the other one is half duplex there will be a confusion between the switch so you need to properly configure if the other party is half duplex the other party should be also be Half duplex. Okay. Auto MDX, the purpose of auto MDX if you mistakenly put a cable. Example, on our packet tracer. Uh, this one, uh, example, we press delete. We delete the cable. Instead of straight through, we put a crossover cable here. Would the switch still functions? Yes, okay, because there's a green light and green light. Let's pass forward. Oh. The switch automatically knows, since the switch is intelligent, internally it will uh, configure or it will treat the wire as a straight through. So that's the purpose of automatic MDIX, medium independent interface crossover. Okay. By the default, the auto MDX is uh, configured on a switch. It's a default. So what we have learned from this chapter, the Ethernet operates the data link and a physical layer. The Ethernet stands uh, define both layer 2, protocols and layer 1. That is the frames and bits transmission through light electrical pulse or radio frequency. So we have a frame fields, preamble starts frame, destination, source, either type, data, and the frame check sequence. MAC addressing provides a method for device identification of data link of the OSM model. The MAC address has say 48 bits or 12 hexadecimal digit or equivalent to 6 bytes. When device forwarding message, the header includes the source destination MAC address. And the different addresses use layer to unicast and broadcast and multicast connections. Okay. Layer 2 Ethernet switch makes forwarding decision based on solely layer 2 Ethernet MAC address. Switch build a MAC address table. Switch forwards frame searching for match destination address. 
switch use one forward method okay by default we are using uh, the Cisco switch start true but you can configure it to store forward okay a memory method buffering import base memory and there are two types of of duplex settings this is the half and a full duplex okay uh, how is it we configure the switch to become a store forward it's it's not available on your packet tracer okay but the command there is switching if you type switching mode dash mode then store dash forward for the actual switch forward you can use this command on a actual switch for you to uh, move or your mode from your cut through to become a store forward but this is not available for the packet tracer okay if you uh, turn to back or uh, turn it back to the default cut through simply type no switch port mode so that it will become the, the default okay so that's it uh, thank you guys for having this wonderful discussion but before that uh, let's have a the last review let's review before you take your exams so review this I uh, made for you the reviewer. So these are the some, uh, uh, some of the terminologies that I made you encounter on your examinations for your modular examinations of uh, Ethernet concepts under chapter 4 to 7. So you've learned the physical layer, the OSI layer, the modulation, the bandwidth, good put throughput latency you need to review those terminology copper cabling review the copper media we have a three stp utp and the uh, coaxial the radio frequency interference and uh, electromagnetic interference as well as the crosstalk okay what is crosstalk disturbance caused by electrical or magnetic fields of a signals okay the data is transmitted on a copper cables as electrical pulse if you are using the uh, cable or the copper cabling attenuation it happens the disturbance increase will cause loss of signal okay the stp and utp cable you know the function of uh, the purpose of crossover and straight through for straight through you will be dealing with unlike devices where the crossover you are dealing with the like devices coaxial okay. oh, you are using the binet not connector or the british not connector bnc where in the utp and stp we are using the rj45 for fiber optic cable you know it is immune to EMI and RFI, but so expensive. For wireless, you are using air as a radio frequency uh, transmission. So usually, the problem with the wireless, if you have a cordless phones or microwaves uh, open, that will uh, create a disruption over your radio frequency transmission. Over uh, the titanic layer, we've learned the logical link control and the media access control as well as their sub layer. Oh, the topology, we have the physical and the logical topology. For physical, this is the actual setup of your equipment, whereas the logical use, will, this will be your logical address, such as IP version 4, IP version 6, and your MAC address. For one topologies, we have the partial mesh the mesh point to point and half to spoke for the duplex we have here the half 
and a full duplex. For a half duplex, it's a matter of wait for your turn. You can, uh, the transmit and receive are not the same time, where in the full duplex, the transmit and receive are the same uh, time. Okay, you can transmit and receive at at the same time. Okay. For the current distance multiple access of regulation detection, okay, for the uh, past topology as mentioned before, by default that is full uh, half duplex for the star and extended star, they are uh, full duplex, okay. Uh, I stand corrected on my previous uh, discussion. For the wireless, we are using the career sense multiple access over collision avoidance. Okay. So this is the illustration of the layer 2 print, the logical link control sublayer, and the MAC address sublayer responsible for the IEEE802.LAN MAN. Okay. Uh, logical link control is implemented in a software. Uh, this is the illustration of the frame wherein the minimum required for the frame is 64 bytes and the maximum is 1580. Anything below and beyond that number is discarded. The function of cyclic redundancy check or the CRC, you can check it on the print check sequence. Okay, the trailer eh, of the data link frame contains error detection. Why the trailer has a frame check sequence? Okay, oh, Ethernet examines two fields, the frame uh, check sequence and the minimum frame size. If the minimum frame size or below 64 it will be discarded, if greater than the number of previous uh, bytes, it will be this. So the source MAC address, the source MAC address and error checking are contained in the Ethernet header and trailer. Multicast MAC address uh, is using the 00, uh, 0, 1, 0, 0, 5 e 0, 0, 0, 0 until the 0, 1, 0, 0, 5 e 7 f f f f f So that is the range of the multicast uh, um, uh, multicast uh, MAC address. Okay. For the FFFF, that is used for the broadcast. Uh, if the uh, MAC address is all F, that is broadcast. For auto MDX, the purpose of this is if your cable is uh, incorrect, the switch will automatically correct it internally. Okay, using the auto MDX. Oh, we have a shared memory buffering for the storing forward. Uh, we have the store forward switching, the store forward and pass forward fragment P. And for uh, cut through, by default, the, the Cisco switch is using the cut through uh, switching. Okay, The pass forward switching forwards the frames after reading the destination MAC address, resulting into lowest latency, whereas the fragment pre reads the 64 bytes before forward. Okay. A forward store has a highest latency because it reads the entire frame because the beginning, before the beginning and forward it. Okay, both fragment pre and pass forward types are cut through. Oh, remember this: uh, the fragment pre and pass forward are cut through switching. Modern switches, okay. They auto negotiate for duplex. Oh. Auto index already told. Okay, what's this? When a frame contains switch exams layer to source to build and maintain the layer to MAC address. Okay, that is for the switch to create a CAM or MAC address table. 
or switch using the store forward method to perform error check, frame error checking, and incoming frame by comparing the frame check sequence value against its own frame check sequence calculation after the entire frame is received. The uh, cyclic redundancy check of the trader is used to determine if the frame has been modified during the transit. Okay, that's it. I'll review your uh, this uh, discussion before you take your exam. Okay, thank you guys. Uh, see you on the third video for module three. Hopefully, you have learned from me. Maraming salamat. Mabuhay.